Brian, let's begin uh, with this joint statement from those Western countries and the message that they are sending. Um, as we know, the U.S. is exploring sanctions and more. So do you think we could see the same from those other countries? Um, what do you think will happen here? Yes, I think unfortunately and in violation of international law and in violation of earlier uh, handover agreements uh, between Britain and China, between Britain and the People's Republic of China, the United States is trying to pull together an international united front to interfere, to blatantly interfere in China's internal affairs and to use the events in Hong Kong as a pretext to impose new anti-China measures in numerous countries. And again, it, it's part of the new Cold War, sadly, uh, tragically, I would say. Uh, but yes, the United States is spearheading this effort. I think the other countries, minus U.S. pressure, would not be going down this road. They would prefer, in fact, to have normal and good relations with China. Hong Kong is not at the top of their agenda. This is a U.S. operation. You know, so many multinational companies have uh, offices or have based their uh, operations in Asia in Hong Kong. So looking at it from an economics and business angle, and with Hong Kong potentially losing its special trade status with the United States, um, you know, American companies, a lot of American companies are against this move. Um, what is likely to happen there? I think a lot of business interests and a lot of people who have some sort of rationality about U.S.-China relations are profoundly worried about the, the trajectory of American, the American push, the hostile push against China, and especially uh, challenging basically the sovereignty of China over uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is part of China. Uh, the business interests don't want this because it hurts them. It hurts their own interest to be able to do commercial activity in Hong Kong and perhaps even in the mainland. But right now, the politics of the Cold War are such that, that it's hard for people, even those who have a, a stated opposition to American policy, to speak up. It's really a kind of witch hunt atmosphere here in the United States, and, and it's maintained and echoed by the mainstream media. But yes, commercial and business interests are not happy about this. The, I'm talking about business interests in the West. But at the same time, they are being extremely pressured and challenged. If they speak up and speak out and say, look, this is a bad road for America to go down, they're worried about being tarred and feathered or labeled an apologist for uh, the government of the People's Republic of China. It's a very bad political situation. Let's uh, turn to the two sessions that just closed up and which had the theme of people first, reiterating goals such as eradicating extreme poverty across China. There's also health care reform. I want to get your big takeaways from these uh, two sessions, especially with the pandemic and other geopolitical pressures um, happening at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it's a remarkable achievement for China, given the fact that uh, what was happening at Wuhan in the beginning of, the, of this year, the fact that China was able to contain the virus, the fact that China has been able to return to some semblance of normalcy, both politically and economically, and to hold these two sessions. Yes, they held a little bit later and a little bit shorter, but they, they took place, and they projected uh, a kind of confidence by the Chinese government. Uh, in terms of the main goals coming forward, access to health care, we can see that the critical character of having widespread access to health care and to have a health care system that allows uh, health care officials to be able to deal with such, such a thing as COVID-19. The, the idea of creating 9 million new urban jobs uh, as part of the anti-poverty campaign, the reaffirmation of this commitment, uh, China has in the past 40 years lifted 850 million people out of dire poverty. That's the greatest anti-poverty uh, experiment and achievement in human history by all countries, and that's recognized by international authorities. These were some of the basic themes of the, of the NPC, and of course, getting ready for the new economic plan that talks about the energy transition, the need for the Chinese economy and the world economy to transition to other energy sources. Of course, these are big challenges. But I think the NPC uh, demonstrated a lot of confidence and vision going forward. Brian Becker, as always, great to hear your take. Thanks for joining us.